27 for Children's Church during the 11 o'clock service. Hope you enjoy. On April 21st, after the 11 o'clock service, we'll be holding a new members fellowship. If you've become a new member in the last few years, we want to get a chance to know you. So come on out. Refreshments will be served. The Mighty Men of God will be holding their monthly prayer breakfast on Saturday, April 13th at 9 a.m. at the Panera Bread in Clinton, Maryland. Come out and enjoy the Word of God and some great breakfast. Here are some opportunities to serve at the Fort. Vacation Bible School is looking for volunteers. For more information, there is a sign-up table in the vestibule after both services. The missions ministry is planning a trip to Tobago, and they are asking for donations to help them fund the trip. For more information, contact Reverend Joseph Brown. Fort Foot will be holding its monthly food distribution on Saturday, April 20th at 9 a.m. For more information, or if you'd like to volunteer, please contact Reverend Joseph Brown. Today, during our 11 o'clock service, Fort Foot holds Children's Church and Youth Church. So head to the Fellowship Hall for Youth Church and Room 27 for Children's Church during the 11 o'clock service. Hope you enjoy. 34 years. For 34 years, our pastor, Rev. Dr. Joseph W. Lyles, and our First Lady, Sheila M. Lyles, have been blessing this church with the Word of God and it's time for us to celebrate it. Our festivities start on Wednesday, April 10th at 7 p.m. where we will be having a word from Pastor Kofi Bryant of Inspired Life Ministries. On Friday, April 12th at 7 p.m. we will be having a praise celebration featuring Greg Blackman and Dunamis. We conclude our celebration on Sunday, April 14th with our 7.30 service being blessed by the word of Rev. Rodney Avent of First Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. But you also won't want to miss our 11 o'clock service where we get a word from Rev. Jeffrey Jackson of St. Stephen's Baptist Church. Our pastor has done so much for us, so come out and celebrate his commitment and love for Fort Foot Baptist Church. Discover the latest in cancer treatment at the Advanced in Radiation Therapy virtual event on April 20th at 10 a.m. Hear patient testimonies and more. For more information, contact Minister Deborah Johnson. The Mighty Men of God will be holding their monthly prayer breakfast on Saturday, April 13th at 9 a.m. at the Panera Bread in Clinton, Maryland. Come out and enjoy the Word of God and some great breakfast. Innocent Healthcare Services would like to extend their medical services to the congregation of Fort Foot Baptist Church and the community. So scan the QR code to join their mailing list and schedule a free blood pressure screening. For more information, contact Sister Joan King. On April 21st, after the 11 o'clock service, we'll be holding a new members fellowship. If you've become a new member in the last few years, we want to get a chance to know you. So come on out. Refreshments will be served. Here are some opportunities to serve at the Fort. Vacation Bible School is looking for volunteers. For more information, there is a sign-up table in the vestibule after both services. The missions ministry is planning a trip to Tobago, and they are asking for donations to help them fund the trip. For more information, contact Rev. Joseph Brown. Fort Foot will be holding its monthly food distribution on Saturday, April 20th at 9 a.m. For more information, or if you'd like to volunteer, please contact Reverend Joseph Brown.
this morning. We want you to worship him in spirit and in truth with us as we sing to the glory of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 
God. Hallelujah. Keep praising him. Keep praising him. Hallelujah. This next one is personal. You can just let the Lord know how much you love him. For all that he is and all that he's done for us, we just love him. And so that's all, that's all the song says is, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you just for who you are in all of your glory. Lord, I love you. Father, we thank you so very much for what you've done for us. 
your benevolence, your loving kindness, your grace, your mercy uh, has fallen upon us, Father, and how good it is to be called sons and daughters of the Most High God. It is at this moment, Father, that we enter into this place, that we are ever grateful to you, Father, that you allowed it to be so. Father, we desire your presence among all the things that we're about to do during these next few hours. May you be pleased and satisfied with we, your children, as we give over to the things of you that are rightfully yours in terms of praise and honor and magnification. And Father, we didn't come empty-handed. We brought along our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. And you said you love a cheerful giver, and we are cheerful indeed because of the wonderful things you have done for us. And so, Father, thank you for abiding with us. Thank you for dwelling with us uh, during this time. We love you. We love you. We love you. You are the great I am. And we are satisfied, Father, with the wonderful things you have done for us. This is your service prayer on behalf of these, your people. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Lord just one more time so that we can praise the Lord. Let's just say hallelujah. Give him one more praise. One more hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do we have any first-time visitors this morning? Amen. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Joseph W. Lowes, our beautiful First Lady, Sheila, w, Sheila M. Lowes, and the Fort Foot family and friends, we say welcome. We thank you for visiting with us. Our ushers will have a visitor's card for you if you can fill it out and give it back to the usher or put it in the offering plate. We'd love to get in contact with you and get to know you more. Also on the back, there's a uh, place for prayer. If you have any prayers, we have wonderful prayer warriors who will lift up your um, prayers in their prayer time. Thank you, you can have a seat. If you're worshiping with us online or worshiping with us in the service in the sanctuary, we thank you for being with us. We thank you, we welcome you. We ask that you allow the Lord to use you to hear the, what the word of the Lord is saying to you and take those words out to the community. Let, the, uh, let your love, your light be a shining brightness in this dark world. We thank you, we welcome you, and we also ask that you commit to praying and praying and praising more in 2024. We love you and we thank you, amen. Today, during our 11 o'clock service, Fort Foot holds Children's Church and Youth Church. So head to the Fellowship Hall for Youth Church and Room 27 for Children's Church during the 11 o'clock service. Hope you enjoy. 34 years. For 34 years, our pastor, Reverend Dr. Joseph W. Lyles, and our First Lady, Sheila M. Lyles, have been blessing this church with the Word of God and it's time for us to celebrate it. Our festivities start on Wednesday, April 10th at 7 p.m. where we will be having a word from Pastor Kofi Bryant of Inspired Life Ministries. On Friday, April 12th at 7 p.m. we will be having a praise celebration featuring Greg Blackman and Dunamis. We conclude our celebration on Sunday, April 14th, with our 7.30 service being blessed by the word of Reverend Rodney Avent of First Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. But you also won't want to miss our 11 o'clock service where we get a word from Reverend Jeffrey Jackson of St. Stephen's Baptist Church. Our pastor has done so much for us, so come out and celebrate his commitment and love for Fort Foot Baptist Church. Discover the latest in cancer treatment at the Advanced in Radiation Therapy virtual event on April 20th at 10 a.m. Hear patient testimonies and more. For more information, contact Minister Deborah Johnson. The Mighty Men of God will be holding their monthly prayer breakfast on Saturday, April 13th at 9 a.m. at the Panera Bread in Clinton, Maryland. Come out and enjoy the Word of God and some great breakfast. Innocent Healthcare Services would like to extend their medical services to the congregation of Fort Foot Baptist Church and the community. So scan the QR code to join their mailing list and schedule a free blood pressure screening. For more information, contact Sister Joan King. On April 21st, after the 11 o'clock service, we'll be holding a new members fellowship. If you've become a new member in the last few years, we want to get a chance to know you. So come on out. Refreshments will be served. Here are some opportunities to serve at the Fort. Vacation Bible School is looking for volunteers. For more information, there is a sign-up table in the vestibule after both services. The Missions Ministry is planning a trip to Tobago, and they are asking for donations to help them fund the trip. For more information, contact Reverend Joseph Brown. 
Fort Foot will be holding its monthly food distribution on Saturday, April 20th at 9 a.m. For more information or if you'd like to volunteer, please contact Reverend Joseph Brown. Good morning, Fort Foot. At this time, I would like to ask if our pastor, Reverend Dr. Joseph W. Lyles, and our first lady, Mrs. Sheila M. Lyles, will stand, please. Amen. On Wednesday, April 10th, on Friday, April 12th, and on Sunday, April 14th, we will be honoring our pastor and first lady as our pastor will be celebrating 34 years of pastoral service to Fort Foot Baptist Church. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give God some glory. Amen, amen. You know, our pastor and his wife pray for you. They comfort the bereaved. They go visit the sick and they give uh, counsel. Uh, the pastor preaches, you know, whether it's hot or cold, whether it's sunny or rainy, whether it's sleet or snow, he's always here preaching the word. You know, whether the sanctuary is full, half full, or empty, he's here. And he's still preaching the unadulterated word of God. You know, he attends your baby uh, 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 dedications, uh, graduations he's at. He uh, does house uh, warmings. Uh, anything you ask of him. And you know what? He doesn't ask very much from his congregation. But we would like for you to show your love in giving our pastor a love offering that would help him to have a much more enjoyable, how about just having a vacation period? Because he doesn't take much of a vacation. So we'd like for you all to show up physically for next week, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Uh, surely we can get a good representation of uh, our congregation, our family and friends out here. And uh, come out and just enjoy yourself and give your pastor some honor. Amen, amen. When you entered the sanctuary this morning, you received a special love envelope. This envelope is earmarked specifically for Pastor's 34th anniversary. We trust that you are led to place a small token in the envelope. If you are led to do so, if you're writing a check, we ask that you make the check payable to Fort Foot Baptist Church. And in the memo section of the check, please place pastor's anniversary, Reverend Lyles. Your check will be tax deductible. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, there are not many churches in the DMV who have a pastor that's been in the pulpit for 34 years. Amen. And I tell you what, Reverend Lyles, doctor, Reverend Lyles, 
does not take a day sick off. He has never taken a day off sick. And that is an amazement to me in itself. Uh, he's been here and reiterated that uh, at the service early this morning when he said that he had been here at this church for 12,000 days. That's what it equates to. That's an amazing feat itself. <laughs> Truly, we are blessed, and we need to show how we're blessed. Make a sacrifice. That money you had earmarked to do something else with, think about giving something to your pastor. He will be there for you, has always been, and will be for a while. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing each of you on Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Amen? Amen. 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 When thou comest into your kingdom, O Lord, remember me. When thou comest into your kingdom, O Save yourself, save us now. If you really are the Son of God, come down and save us. If you cannot, don't believe you are the man you say you if thou be, be the Christ, prove it and save yourself. Save us now, if you really are the Son of God, I doubt it.
Oh, bless his holy name. That is our prayer and desire to be sanctified. It means to be set apart for God's divine service. That he may use us for his glory, his glory alone. Thank you, anointed chance choir for your music ministry. God will use us for his glory. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. I stand humming this morning to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm standing in awe and amazement that it has been 34 years, over 12,000 days. James chapter 4 verse 14 said, Life is but a vapor. It is only here for a little while and then it vanishes away. Surely the time has gone so quickly. My God from heaven. I'm amazed, first of all, that God ever called me to the ministry. Because I was something. Going and coming. Did not feel worthy. Had life issues. I said, God, surely I didn't hear you correctly. Maybe Reverend Good or Reverend Brown and Reverend Norman, but not me. I, I got issues. He said, I know that. I said, God, I'm not worthy. He said, and don't ever think you will be. He said, I told you before, I don't call the qualified. I qualify those whom I call. I got to confess, I cried. After my wife went to the store, I cried alone. I said, Lord, I don't want to do this. But not my will. I had other plans, but God had a better plan. So I'm grateful, humble that God would see fit to use an imperfect vessel to preach about a perfect Savior, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank my wife for tracking with me down through the years. It ain't been easy. You all may not know, but it's not easy being married to a workaholic. It's not easy. She could have left her brother a long time ago, but she hung on in there. I thank you. I bless you. This morning for a few moments, meet me in Psalm 34, verse 1, if you will. Psalm 34, beginning at verse 1. There was a word to lift and encourage our hearts on this morning. David cried out, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man and woman that trusted in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no one to us that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearers and doers of his holy and precious word. Eternal God, our Father, we come to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy. 
It is only because of your mercy that we are not consumed. Great is your faithfulness. In fact, your mercy is there anew every day. I humbly ask now, God, you would send down your power from on high that your word would bring about a life-changing impact on your people, that we would have a greater hunger and thirst for you, that we may be filled to live a life that's pleasing in your sight. We'll be careful to give your name all the honor and the glory. Send that mighty, master's marvelous, powerful, resurrected name of Jesus that we pray. All of God's family said amen, amen. and bless the Lord. With their help and prayers for a few moments on this blessed Sunday morning, first Sunday in April, 2024, I want to preach and teach from the subject, a heart full of praise. A heart full of praise. Sometimes once we have a short background of the text, it helps the text to come alive and become the living word. Such is the case here with Psalm 34. There was a giant by the name of Goliath who was bigger than Shaquille O'Neal, taller than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, had a issue, terrorized the people of God for about 40 days, breathing out threatenings. Finally, little David came down to the battle. His older brother said, David, why did you come down here to watch the battle? David said, let me help you. I did not come to watch the battle. I came to win the battle. David said, you uncircumcised Philistine, You've got the nerve to come against the army of the living God? Before the Philistines could yell, uh, Hail Dagon, Dagon was their fish head God. The stone had hit Goliath in the head. He was down. David had took his sword and cut off his head. That was a great triumph, but it was also the beginning of a great trouble for David. There was a song they sang in the Bible time. Saul was a great Warrior also, the song went like this. Saul killed a thousand, but David killed ten thousand. From that moment on, Saul became insanely jealous. I'm glad I passed the Fourth Baptist Church where there are no envious and jealous folk. Everybody's loving on everybody. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, considering others to be better and lifting one another in the spirit of love, honor, and collaboration. Do have a witness. Saul became so insanely jealous, twice he threw at David's head with a javelin. Another time he tried to engage David in argument with the Philistines, hoping one of them would kill him. Thirdly, he sent a group of bullets to kill him in bed. Time after time, he hunted Saul throughout the nation like an animal. And Saul was enraged. All because David was getting glory and not Saul. David was faithful, man after God's own heart, for most of the time. David was so skilled, at one point, he cut a patch out of Saul's robe and said, this could have been your head, but because you're the king, I respect the office, but not the person. But later on, as time went on, even in David's life and our lives, Sometimes we get weak. Sometimes our faith is strong. Other times it gets weak and we fall and falter. David began to be weak. Went down to Gad. The place where he had conquered Philistine hero by the name of Goliath. Told four lies. Not one. Four lies. He was a man of faith, but now he starts dealing with lies. Anytime we start dealing with lies, we're on a downward spiral. Do I have a witness? Convince the priest to give the showbread to his men and somehow got him to give him Goliath's sword. And the moment he did that, we hear the chains go click, 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 click. You killed our hero. We've been looking for you. You are a dead man. The Bible said that David sought asylum from King of Gath by the name of Achish. David began to fear, become terrified, petrified, thinking he was going to die. So he feigned to pretend to be insane. Before we get too hard on David, 
at one point in time, at some point in time, all of us have done some stuff that was totally spiritually insane. How you know Romans 3.23 said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You lied. I lied. We came short. We were a little envious. We were not consistent. A little jealousy. A little envy. A little... All of us have said, thought, and done some stuff we said, thought we would never do. But he was so disgusting in the kingdom that he said, get out of here. Go back to your people, you ain't crazy, wild man. And so it sets the text for a heart full of praise. Now that David was back in the famous cave of Adullam, he began to pen the 34th Psalm. Here's what I've come to learn. Sometime after great pain comes great praise. Come on, help me, church. Sometime once trouble is elevated, so is our praise. David said, after having gone through what I've done, javelin strewn at my head, murderous men trying to kill me, running from Saul all over the nation, acting a fool down in Gath, pretending to be insane, and God delivered me from all of that. David said, I put the S in stupid, I put the T in terrible, I put the A in awful, but God delivered me, so because God gave such a great deliverance, I will give him praise. I'll have a heart full of praise. Come on, help me somebody. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Matter of fact, in verses 1 through 3, we see David's resolve. He said, I made up my mind, no matter what comes, no matter what does not, no matter what happens or what doesn't happen, I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, David. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. For humble shall hear of them be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, church. Let us exalt his name together. I will bless the Lord at all times. Psalm 9-1 says, Psalm 9-1, I will praise him with my whole heart. I will show of his marvelous works. I will sing of your name for thou art my God. There was a great preacher, young, articulate, eloquent, preached with homiletical arrangements, made the proper homiletical assignments, homiletical, hermeneutical transfers, told us about pneumatology, the study of the Holy Spirit, knew about eschatology, the study of end times, knew about theology, the study of God. Old preacher said he preached great, but something is missing. Another preacher said, we got it. Once his heart's been broken, he'll preach better and be worthy to be heard. Sometimes, once you have to go through something, I made it my own word over the last 34 years called testimony. Once the test of life is so strong, it calls you to moan. Once the test of life is so strong, it calls you to moan. You now have a testimony. And once you've got a testimony, oh, you'll praise God in the morning. You'll praise God at the noonday. You'll praise God in the evenings. Such was the case of David. I thought I was going to die down in Gath, but God made a way. He opened up doors for me that no man could see. Now I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, not my praise, shall continue to be in my mouth. No more profanity, but all full of praise. Psalm 18 says us, Psalm 18 tells us, I got to praise him because he's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. He's my strength. You are my buckler. You're the horn of my salvation. You're the God of my triumph. I will call upon the name of the Lord because you are worthy to be praised. Oh, bless that wonderful name. Something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in that name. There's power in that name. There's joy in that name. There's deliverance in the name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. David said, I'm not just talking from my mouth. This praise is emanating out of my soul because of all that God has done for me. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear the other and be glad. He said, you know what? I can't keep this to myself. I got to praise. I got to praise him. I got to get it out. He said, come on, help me, church. Oh, magnify the Lord. When we praise God, we magnify. Magnify means to increase, expand, and enlarge. When we praise God, God gets magnified. When God is magnified, sinners are evangelized. When God is magnified, saints are edified. When God is magnified, God is... Magnify the Lord with me, not by myself. It's going to take all of us together. Let us exalt the name together. 
Exalt means to lift up to the highest. John 12, 32 says this. John 12, 32. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men. There's no power in the name of Lyles or Joseph. There's no power in your name or mine. But when we use the name of Jesus and lift him up, he does the drawing. David said, I have resolved. I've made up my mind. Sometimes up, sometimes down. Almost level to the ground. It don't matter what I'm going through. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going through. God promised to supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I'm going to praise him in the morning. I'll praise him at the noonday. I'll praise him in the evening. I'll praise him in the midnight. No matter what, I'm going to praise him because he's worthy of the praise. All the honor, all the glory, all the power, it belongs to him. David said, you might think my praise is extreme, but you got to know what I've been through. Somebody up in here today has had a hard time, troubled on every side, and distressed, perplexed, and in despair, persecuted, and forsaken, cast down and almost destroyed, but the Lord showed up. Doctor said we've done all that we could, calling the family. Now look good, that was five years ago when God made a, made, made a miracle out of your life. Now you got to praise, you got to praise, you got to praise. Psalm 100, Psalm 100 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful and bless his name. You ought to get out your car thanking God that he woke me up this morning. Thank God my bed was not my cooling board. My sheep was not my winding chain. There was not a tag on my toe. I lay down on the bed of his blessings. Cover me with his care and compassion. Put my head on the pillow of his providence. Woke up with my mind stayed on Jesus. One thing have I desired of the Lord, family. And that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. Just want to inquire in his temple. For in his presence all that's fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. A heart full of praise. Nobody could have kept me for 40, 34 years. Nobody could have done that but the Lord. Couldn't have kept myself. A heart full of praise. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. One through three, he said, David resolved. Four through six, David remembered. He said, I sought the Lord. Have you ever been in trouble when pastor couldn't help you? Deacon couldn't help you. Deacon is not trusting, no church folk could help you. Mama couldn't help you. Daddy couldn't help you. Granddaddy couldn't help you. Neighbor couldn't help you. You had to call on the name of the Lord in a midnight hour. He said, I sought the Lord. Tears in my eyes, heartbroken, distraught, did not know what to do. I sought the Lord. Deuteronomy 4, 29 and Jeremiah 29, 13 both say the same thing. When you and I seek God with all of our heart, oh, then we'll find him. When you come half-hearted, trifling, you won't show up, but when you seek God with your whole heart, he said, you'll find me. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me. Help me somebody. I can't explain it theologically. I cannot grasp it theologically or philosophically or poetically how we pray on earth and God hears us in heaven I don't know how he does it but the Bible says he does you got Bible for that I'm glad you asked Proverbs 15 29 says this God is far from the wicked oh but he hears the prayers of the righteous when we call on that great name something happens I said family when we call on that great name our father hears us If an earthly father knows how to give good things, how much more does our heavenly father? I sought the Lord and he heard me. Not only that, delivered me from all of my fears. Have you ever been afraid? Fear can grip us. Reverend Brown told me to tell you that one acronym for fear is forgetting every available resource. God has not, I repeat, God has not said 2 Timothy 1.7. Give us the spirit of fear, but a power 
Love ain't of a sound mind. Fear is not of God. The just shall live by faith and not by fear. Romans 8, 15 tells us this, this. Romans 8, 15. God has not given us the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Some years ago, my wife and I, I think we were at the airport down to Dallas on our way to Nairobi, Kenya on a mission trip. I saw my Arab friends coming through the airport playfully. The father would run ahead, son behind him. Father had some behind. The little boy said, Abba, Abba, pick me up. Abba is Arabic for father. Pick me up. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's my story. When I get a little low and you get a little low, we can call father, pick me up. Father, pick me up. Turn me around. Put me on a street called straight. Give me back my joy. Give me back my peace. Father. David remembered. As we pause and reflect on April the 7th today, can we reflect on the time when the Lord met us in a crisis? Opened the door that no man could open. Closed off negative doors. Made a way when things seemed impossible. Matter of fact, your situation seemed initially impossible. But by prayer, it got upgraded to improbable. More prayer it went from improbable to inevitable. Won't God fix it? Won't God fix it? Yes. Somebody said, won't he, won't he, won't, won't, won't he do it? Oh, yes, he will. <laughs> David said, I was broke, busted, and disgusted. Verse 6, this poor man cried. I'm not talking about a little cute prayer on Sunday morning to impress somebody by your extensive vocabulary, but when you need a breakthrough because you're about to have a breakdown and you cry out to God from the inner depths of your soul, David said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him, saved him out of all of his trouble. Wait a minute, just told me I've been delivered from all of my fears. Now I'm saved him from all of my trouble. I looked up the word trouble and it was troubling. Trouble means I'm in a tight spot. I can't go up. I can't go back. I can't go left. All right, I'm in trouble. Have you ever been in trouble in a bind, in a fix? trouble in my way. Have to cry sometimes. But that's alright because I know my Jesus will fix it. A heart full of praise. This poor man cried unto the Lord and he heard him. Saved us out of all our troubles. If you ask me why I praise him, because I've been in trouble. Messed up some stuff along the journey. And so have you. Jacked up some stuff just out of sorts. Just stuff happened. Matter of fact, John 16, 33 says, In this world we shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. For I have overcome everything and everybody. David said in verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamped around about us that reverenced him and delivered them. He said, there was no way I should have gotten out of gas alive to make it relevant. We've been in a situation, but there was no way we should have gotten out unscathed, lied so bad it confused the polygraph machine, credit so bad they had to drape the credit report machine with black. But God should have been foreclosed should have been forewarned, should have been terminated, but got promoted. God turned stuff around. It was looking bad going and coming, up and down, all around, but the Lord showed up and made a way as he promised to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God is not a man that he should lie. David resolved, and then David remembered if you and I have a flashback to remember some troubling times, doctor said, your case doesn't look good. The chances of survival in this diagnosis is very, there are two chances, slim and none. And slim just left the building. But here you are, five, six, seven, ten, fifteen 15 years later, 
You won't praise him? You better open up your mouth and give God some praise. Then David said, David said, David said, though I have resolved, though I have remembered. He said, let me, let me help you out. Verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Somebody went to a nice restaurant, came back and told you that the lobster was succulent. The filet mignon was fabulous. The roast beef was really in there. Tilapia was tremendous. You, you, you begin to sal salivate Told you how delicious was the carrot cake in. It's one thing to have a report, but once you have tasted and seen for yourself, you went to that restaurant and said, you know what? The lobster was succulent. I got a filet mignon and it was fabulous. And I took home some tilapia. It was a minute. But now that I've tasted for myself, I can praise God not based on just what you said. Oh, taste and see and know for yourself. And once you taste and see and know for yourself that the Lord is good, you'll have to give God some praise. You'll be saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. I got my own praise report. I got my own testimony based on what God has done in my life. I got to give him glory. I got to turn from my old wicked ways. I got to start living holy. Sanctify me, God. Set me apart for your divine service. Use me for your glory. Matter of fact, God, if you can use anybody, use me for your glory. I'll give your name the praise. I'll give your name the honor. Send me out to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man and woman that trusted in him. You know, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Stop leaning to our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Stop leaning on your own wisdom. Set our eyes on Jesus the Christ. Isaiah 26, 3 says this. Isaiah 26, 3. Jesus said, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me because he does trust in me. There was a missionary linguistic person who was trying to translate a culture's language into English. He was struggling to trying to find a word to explain and describe trust. Finally, one of the workmen came in from the field and just came to a chair and just flopped down in the chair. Didn't check the chair to see how much pressure it would hold him. He just trusted. He said, that's it. Trust means to let our weight down on God. Stop trying to carry more luggage than an allied moving van. Trust in God. Let your weight down on God because he promised never to leave us. No, leave us alone. You can depend on him. You can trust in God. Verse 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered them from them all. Afflictions, afflictions, oh Lord. We like assurances, but not afflictions. Afflictions, anything that causes pain and suffering. David said, God has been just so good to me. Even in the midst of my pain, I'm going to praise him. In the midst of my suffering, I still have a song. I will bless the Lord at all times. My soul does magnify the Lord. A heart full of praise. Praise ye the Lord, says Psalm 150. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of his power. This is not Pastor Lyle's sanctuary. This is God's sanctuary. He is holy. He is worthy in the midst of whatever I'm going through because I told you early on, let me say one last time, and I'm almost done early today. Sometimes out of great pain comes great praise. When elevated problems produce elevated praise, once you've really been deep down, tough into some, and God brings you up, you got a new power. You got a new perspective. You got a new joy. You got a new sense of gratitude. You are more thankful. You're more humble. Praise him upon the loud symbols. Praise him upon the high sounding symbols. Let everything that has breath praise you the Lord. 
Let everything that has breath praise you, the Lord. Blood running warm through my veins, air flowing through my lungs. Praise him in the morning. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, magnify the Lord. Give him glory. Give him honor. He's worthy of all the praise. A heart full of praise. David said, I resolve. I remembered. Now I'm rejoicing. We all have challenges. But look around the nation and at our world. We could be held hostage in Gaza this morning. We could be in Ukraine this morning. We could be in Haiti with the chaos today. Only by his grace and his mercy. Not that we've been so good. Not that we've always been so holy. Not that we've always practiced such spiritual attitudes and disciplines. But by his grace and his mercy we're standing here today. Sitting here today only by the goodness of God. It's the goodness of God, Paul said, that causes me to repent. When I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that is done for you and all that is done for me, my soul cries out, glory, glory, hallelujah. Sometimes it's just so good. Feel like heaven come down and glory fill my soul. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. Sanctify my soul, mind, and my body so I can be used for your glory. A heart full of praise. Him knowledge just had it right when he said, if I had a thousand tongues to give God praise, that still would not be enough. Sometimes, thank you, Lord, seems so insufficient based on all that he has done. I got to praise him because one Friday afternoon, he went to a hill called Calvary. I got to praise him because he died so that I could live. Matter of fact, the prophet Isaiah said it pleased God to bruise him so that he might bless us. I got to give God praise because early one Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave with all power in his hand. One day I heard those words. My little heart was broken. My mind was convinced. And I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, wounded, and sad. But now I'm rejoicing because I found in him a resting place. That he has made me glad. See, I was sinking deep in my sin. I was far from the peace of shore. Badly stained and bruised in. Didn't think I'd ever rise no more. All but the master of the sea heard my despair and cry. From the waters lifting me now safe in my you got a song. I got a song that the angels cannot sing. I've been redeemed. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. All of our sins have been forgiven because Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. So I asked you at communion day, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. I'll praise him. I'll love him. I'll serve him. As long as there's air in my lungs, blood in my body, I'll give God the glory. I'll give him the praise. I'll give him the honor because you're worthy. One glad morning, when this old dusty march down here is over, I want to see those eyes that look like balls of fire. I want to see the hair that look like lamb's wool. I want to gaze at those feet that look like palm's brands that they've been burned in the furnace. I want him saying, four foot in family and loud. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. You preached when they liked it. You preached when they didn't. You preached when they shot it. You preached when they pouted. It. You stayed fast. You were steadfast and immovable. Always trying to abound in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor in the Lord was not in vain. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. He is great. He great to be praised. He heals all my broken heart. Binds up our wounds. That's why I love him. That's why I love him. That's why I worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Something about that name. Oh, how I love calling that name. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. Oh, but that's something about that name. He walks with me. Talks with me. Tells me I'm his own. And when we've been there. For 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. 
Praise him, praise him, lift him up. Praise him, lift him up. Praise him, lift him up. Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus. If you're here today, my friend, and have never accepted Jesus, today is a mighty good day to do that. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. Isaiah said the chastisement of his peace was upon him, yet now his stripes are we healed. Would there be one today who wants to come out of darkness to begin to walk in a marvelous light? If you're trying to make it through this life on a journey on your own, my friend, that's not enough. We need Jesus to help us. The Bible says he saved from the guttermost to the uttermost. No matter what the trial, the tribulation, how dark or desperate, how destroyed, Jesus is able to save. For this cause, he died for you and me. For this cause, he rose out of the grave early on Easter Sunday morning that we might come out of darkness and be saved. He is the great mighty I am. Will you trust him today? First John 1 John 1.9 says these words. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says this, Therefore, if any of us be in Christ, we become new creatures. Old things are passed away and all things become new. He can move us from sinner to saint. Today, if you would only come, Accept this precious gift that lasts for all of eternity. Would there be one today? Maybe there's one online. The number there on a screen that'll show momentarily is for you. I know the council will receive your call. Share with you the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I want you to know that I love you so much. But I love you too much to allow you to stay lost out of the ark of safety. So when you go through the challenges of life, he said, I'll be with you. I promise never to leave you nor forsake you. As I deliver David and many others, so will I deliver you. You would only come. It's the greatest decision you could ever make. Somebody says, well, I'm going to get my life straight, then I'm going to join the church. If we could get our own lives straight, he would not have to die on an old rugged cross. Songwriter said, just as I am, I come. Would there be one today? Maybe you hear on the sound of my voice and you already know this, Jesus. You feel led this morning to become a part of our love and caring church. We invite you to come forward at this time. We receive you and welcome you to your new church family. If ever we needed the Lord before, God knows we sure do need him now. Look at all that's going on around us. Somebody said, are these the last days? Maybe so. Jesus is coming back, family. Will you be ready to meet him? Last statement for the morning. Today, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Take away the sins of the whole world. You can meet him today as a Lamb or when he returns as a roaring lion if you don't know him. So let me ask you one simple rhetorical question. If you were going home after this service, on your doorstep 
You have choices. There'd be a lamb or a lion. Which one would you prhfer to me? That's a rhetorical question, I told you. The answer is simple, the lamb. Particularly if the lion is roaring and hungry. But today we have a choice, but when judgment time comes, there'll be no more time for mercy and choices. But today, grace is extended. Mercy is available. Help is here. Would you come if God is speaking? Aren't we glad that God is a deliverer out of any and every situation? Some of us here are going through. By faith, you are going to make it through. By faith, you are being delivered. By faith, he breaks the addiction. By faith, he gives the anointing. God is all of that. I'm a witness. And so are you. Anybody know he's worthy of praise? Can you just give him a wave offering? God, you've been good. Better to me than I could have ever been to myself. The Easter resurrection mandate is this. The Easter resurrection mandate is this. We have come and seen, now we must go and tell. We have come and seen, we are aware of his resurrection, saving, delivering power. Now we got to go out and tell the world by words and by the life that we live. May be seated for a moment in the presence of the Lord. Prepare our hearts for our communion. I stand in awe and amazement once again that this perfect Jesus, Savior of the world, desires to commune with us imperfect people. Only because of his agape love, his amazing grace, and his infinite mercy. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come humbly before this table of communion, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, which means to give thanks, knowing that in and of ourselves, we're not even worthy to partake of the sacraments that represent your body and your blood. But because of your son, Jesus Christ, whose blood was shed for all of us, that we might have a right to the tree of life, we come. But we take a moment to confess our sins, lest we partake of these sacraments unworthily. God, we thank you for loving us beyond what we can comprehend or grasp, even conceive. Your word says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, but God commended his love for us, rolled over his love on us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. What kind of agape love is this? So we come today to thank you for your goodness and your mercy. You are a merciful God. Gracious God, slow to anger and plenty us in mercy. You have not dealt with us according to our sin, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Yes, we love you. Yes, we thank you. We humble ourselves before you this day. Give us hearts, souls, and minds that desire to commune with you, certainly not just once per month, but every day, every hour, every minute of the day. It's in the mighty, precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Reverend Good will give us the blessing over the bread. Reverend Brown will pray over the fruit of the vine. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. 
Father, we thank you for sacrificing your body, dear Lord. You didn't have to do it, but you did it. So, Father, as we lift up these sacraments, dear Lord, the bread, dear Lord, as an example of your broken body, dear Lord, we pray that you would bless it and remind us of the price that was paid for our sins. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we uh, come this evening, dear Lord, to say thank you. We thank you for your word tells us that as often as we do this to keep you in remembrance. We remember, dear Lord, uh, all that you went through, Jesus, all that you went through on the Calvary's cross. We thank you for your blood that was shed for us. For truly, we were so unworthy, but yet and still you died for us. We know that the, that, that the word says that uh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We thank you for giving us grace instead of guilt. We thank you for giving us salvation instead of, in spite of all of our sins, dear Father, that separated us from you, yet and still you hung there on Calvary's cross. So we want to say thank you. We want to praise your holy name because truly uh, we know, dear Lord God, that we were not worthy, dear Lord God. And, and yet and still you didn't wait until we got right, but you, you hung there until everything was satisfied so that we could have eternal life. So we want to give you praise. We want to give you honor. We want to give you glory. We want, we want to live our lives in such a way that, that, that represents all that you went through on our behalf. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I can only imagine the aura in the upper room. Jesus was there with his disciples, looking at the bread, knowing that Gethsemane was calling and Calvary was beckoning. John 6.35 said he is the bread of life. He took the bread. and broke it. He said, this is my body that was broken for you. Let us partake of this bread of life together. As he looked at the fruit of the vine, knowing that it represented his blood, what can wash away our blood. What has made us whole again? Let us partake of this fruit of the vine that represents his shed blood. Amen. From the Four Foot Archive, we declare today, April 7th, a day of praise. No complaining, no murmuring, no disputation, but we will bless the Lord at all times because we have hearts full of praise. Job said, when I thought to complain for a moment, I realized how good God had been. I really had to put my hand over my mouth. Say, God, you know what? You've been good. 
You've been better to me than I could have ever have been to myself, so I will praise you today, not till tomorrow. When doubt jumps on your streets, access denied. Today is a day of praise. Thank you again, Anointed Chancellor Choir, for your music ministry. Thank our faithful senior ushers. Thank our hardworking media ministry. Thank all those who join us today online. May God bless all of us as we go throughout this day and throughout this week. Let us please stand. Since we have Jesus, our spirit will not be eclipsed. Since we got Jesus, our spirit will not be eclipsed. We already have on the glasses of faith so we can see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we don't have to worry who's going to win the championship game the day of tomorrow. We already won. We're on the winning team. Reverend Joseph Brown gives us our closing prayer and our benediction. We should be on our way for this day of praise. No complaining. Until after 12 p.m. tonight. <laughs> Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Dear Lord God, we want to thank you. We want to praise you, dear Father. We want to start right now praising you, dear Lord God, because of all that you have done in our lives, dear Father. So we want to give you glory. We want to give you honor. Help us to, this week, dear, dear Father, to, to every time that, that we, we think of complaining, that we will think about all the things that you have done for us in our life. Lord, we, we thank you. We pray that you would help us to, to live our lives this week, dear Father, and to tell someone else about you. Lord, whatever we came in today with that was not of you, we give it to you right now. Uh, that, that weight, that sin, whatever it may be, that care, that concern, we lay it down on the altar right now. We're not going to leave out heavy like we came in, dear Father, because your word tells us that you are the lifter up of our heads. So we don't have to walk down with a bow down here. We can lift our heads and lift our eyes towards the hills from whence cometh our help. Because our help cometh from you, the maker of heaven and earth. So we're going to give you glory. We're going to give you honor. We're going to run on to see what the end is going to be. We know that, Lord God, we know the end of the story, dear Father. We win, dear Lord God. So, Father, help us to live in such a way and walk in victory, dear Father. Knowing that you have already provided victory for us through Calvary. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, the Bible says they went out and they sung a song. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could Have a great day and a blessed week.